So one of the things that you need to be familiar with, uh, not just for the GED, but uh, comes up in pre-algebra classes, it's get used in algebra, is what's known as the Cartesian coordinate plane. The Cartesian coordinate plane. This isn't actually the only name we call it. Your teacher might call it the XY plane. They might just call it the coordinate plane. Um, but um, either way, what you're going to see here is you're going to see two perpendicular number lines. So first I have a number line that's horizontal, the way we're used to. That is known as the x-axis. And just as we're used to, um, it starts uh, with, well, I shouldn't say it starts with, but because you can look at any portion of um, a number line. But this particular one right here at the intersection of these two lines is where we see zero right here at the intersection. That's zero, or we also call that point the origin because it's where we start counting. And from there, as if we go right, we are going to be um, getting larger and larger. So one, two, three, and I could have numbered this anyway. I just chose to make every two blocks worth one, okay? And it goes out and it gets positive as we go off to the right. And as we're used to, we see this mirror effect as we go off to the left that I'm getting more and more negative or getting smaller and smaller. Remember, the more negative you get, the smaller the value is, the less it's worth. Okay, so that we should be familiar with, but unlike a number line, we suddenly have a second um, axis or a number line coming off at a right angle here, and we call that the y axis. What just happened to us is life just got two dimensional on a Cartesian coordinate plane. A number line is only one dimensional. Um, a Cartesian coordinate plane is two dimensional. Okay, and so. We're going to see the same basic idea here, though, but it's just as you go up on the y-axis, you get positive. So one, two, three, four, and so on. And as you go down, you get negative. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and so on. Okay, great. So there's a lot of vocabulary that you're... Um, going to see um, either when you take your tests or in classes that you have to know what the teacher's talking about. So we've learned the x-axis, we've learned the y-axis, we've learned the origin. Here's some other vocabulary you need to know. You need to know about quadrants. Notice that these two um, number lines basically break all of space into four areas. Those four areas are known as quadrants. And we do number them. And so we number them starting with the right top corner. We call this one quadrant one and we use Roman numerals. So it looks like quadrant I, okay? Quadrant, I'll spell quadrant out once for you so you can put it in your notes. But just know that math teachers are so lazy we don't usually spell quadrant, we abbreviate it Q. Okay, so Quadrant one is up there on the right hand side and I start there because this is the land where my X's are positive and my Y's are positive. I'm out here in the positive area for X and the positive area for Y. And then, interestingly enough, as you number the other quadrants, instead of going clockwise, as you might suspect, you actually go counterclockwise. So that throws a lot of people. So if this is quadrant one, I'm going to come around, I'm going to go opposite of a clock counterclockwise. And here we have quadrant two. And again, I use my Roman numerals, so it looks like Q double I. Quadrant three. And quadrant four. And some teachers will make you memorize, like positive, positive is quadrant one. Negative, positive is quadrant two. Negative, negative is, I don't do that. I just draw my little number line and go counterclockwise. Start in the positive place and go, go around. And I think that's easier than trying to memorize a bunch of information. We can see where our pattern comes from, okay? So the very first thing that you're gonna ask, uh, be asked to do when you're in a Cartesian coordinate plane is to uh, graph points, find points, identify points. We also call those points coordinates. 
uh, coordinate pairs. Okay, so um, just to let you know, a point, aka a coordinate pair, is a single location somewhere on this plane that we're looking at. It's a single location. Um, okay, so for example, I could, let's do it, start with an easy one. There is a point right there, okay? This is a point, but the way I describe it, it on a graph is with a little dot. It looks like a point, but the way I'd describe it if I wanted to do numbers would be with a coordinate pair. I would describe, it's like um, giving the address to your house. I could give you a picture of your house or I could give you the street address. I'm talking about the same thing. So there's a picture of a point, but there's also a way to describe its address. Coordinate pairs are always in parentheses. So please open up a pair of parentheses. And what you're gonna see is that the X coordinate comes first. So you put the X coordinate first, where it is horizontally in space. And then you put the Y coordinate second, where that point lies vertically in space. So let's take a look. This point is at where horizontally? Well, come to this horizontal axis for me, and let's see where this point lines up with. Well, it seems to line up with one, two, three, four, five. See how this point is above five on the X axis? And so this is the point five something, but something, we need to know what the other thing is. So let's see where it is at on as far as vertically placed so compare it up against the y-axis and you can see it's lined up with the number two on the y-axis okay and so this is the point five two i say that again this is the point five two so when i see these parentheses i read the point five two okay great um and this is one single coordinate pair or one single point. Okay, this is not two different um, unrelated numbers or two different answers. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's important to put the parentheses. If you just wrote the numbers five and two, I would think those were two totally separate unrelated numbers. But because when you have the parentheses, I read that as the point five two. So let me erase that. Okay, uh, let's go around and look at a, um, a few other points here so let's see if we can figure out this point right here so now I have a point over here in quadrant 2 what is its address well once again remember that you're gonna find its X value first you're gonna find out how far horizontally how far horizontally it is from the origin and we can see you would have to come over one two three four uh, four, but we went left, so that's negative four. Sorry, I should have said negative all along. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So I'm negative four in the x direction. I went left four. And then I have to go up one, and so I'm one in the y direction. So this is the point negative four, one. So pretty simple, not too bad, um, the numbering these points. Um, where it gets tricky for some students often is when the points fall on the um, axes themselves. That can happen. So I'm going to grab a different color so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, but let's take a look like here. Okay, so what's the address of this point or what coordinate pair describes this point? Well, again, I'm always going to have parentheses and I'm always going to have the X value and the Y value inside my parentheses. Now, the X value is how far left or right I moved from the origin. And you can see that I did not move left or right, did I? No, I'm lined right up with the origin. Um, I did made no vertical movement and so I have no... Guys, I just screwed up my language. I'm sorry, can I say that again? This point made no horizontal movement. No horizontal movement. It didn't go left or right. There you go. And so my X is zero because it didn't move left or right. However, there is vertical movement for sure. I was a liar about that. You can see that if I start at the origin, I have to go down one, two, three to get to here. So I had to go down three. That's a negative 
three vertical movement. So a negative three in the y value. So this is the point zero, negative three. Zero, negative three. Let's look at one more point, one more point. Got a new color out. I wanna look at what if it was over here? Okay, here we see a point on an axis again, which often is the, are the trickiest problems for students. So again, I'm expecting um, parentheses for, to describe a coordinate pair with an x value and a y value. So if I were to start at the origin, do I have any horizontal movement this time? Well, yeah, I sure do. I have to go over one, two, three, four. So x value is horizontal movement, so I have a four in my x. But if you take a look, it's like, how far did I go up or down? How much vertical movement do I have? Well, if you see, starting at the origin and going to this point, I haven't moved up or down. There's no vertical movement. There's no Y movement. And so this is the point four, zero. One last thing before I leave, it's super important that you know, we named this point in the middle. We said that's called the origin, but what is the coordinate pair that represents the origin? Well, let's think about it. The origin is the start of everything. It's where we start our horizontal movement. It's where we start our vertical movement. So do be aware that the address or the coordinate pair for the origin is zero, zero. Okay, I think um, we've got a pretty good introdu introduction now to the Cartesian coordinate plane. Um, so you should be able to graph points and identify points um, on the GED and again for your pre-algebra and algebra classes. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments.